So Nicktoons Unite came out and it got pretty mixed reviews, but it did sell pretty well, at least the PS2 version did, since it did get a Greatest Hits re-release. So since Unite sold pretty well, we got three sequels, each one released year by year and ending in 2008. That's pretty crazy. Nowadays it would usually take two to four years for a sequel to come out, but back during the PS2 era, it'd only take a year for a sequel to come out after the first game. It was wild. Nick Jones Battle for Volcano Island, the video game. Available now. Believe it or not, this was actually the last console Nicktoons game I actually played. After I finished Unite, I skipped over Volcano Island and went straight into the other two sequels. I did play the GBA version, but I wouldn't play the console version until a little bit later on. Blue Tongue Entertainment and THQ both return and they have the same roles as they did in Unite and Volcano Island was released in 2006 in North America, for the same systems as last time. And in 2007 the game was released everywhere else. Fun fact, the GameCube version was not only the last Nickelodeon game released for the system, but it was also released exclusively in North America. I'm pretty sure by the time the game released everywhere else in 2007, the GameCube was basically discontinued. So like my review of Unite, I'll be reviewing the console versions, and we'll save both the handheld versions for another time. Unlike my Unite review though, I will be playing the GameCube version. I've played both console versions, but there isn't any major differences or exclusive features between the two. So let's begin with the plot, which is quite a big difference from Unite. An evil being known as the Magu is poisoning an island called Volcano Island, and with that is creating a big rift between time and space, causing a lot of different pieces from other Nicktoons worlds to fall onto Volcano Island. The wise old crab, who was played by Hot Pop himself, <laughs> I don't feel safe. summons eight of the nine so-called chosen ones to the island. Unfortunately, due to a mishap, it scatters the eight heroes across the island, and only Spongebob and Danny are the ones who show up in front of the summoning. The wise old crab tells Spongebob and Danny about their problem, and they agree to travel across the island to find the other heroes, while also fixing any problems on the island, and gathering parts for a rift zipper to seal the Maku away. And that's the basic story. Like Unite's story, it's very simple, but honestly, I think the story is even better than before. Sure, it doesn't take place in the actual worlds this time, and there's no villains from each show this time, but I really appreciate Volcano Island trying something different, and having a brand new location not seen in any show. It's really cool. I also love the grandness it has. Like, there are big stakes this time around. Whereas Unite's story, while it's still an enjoyable plot for what it was, I don't think it reaches the grand scope Volcano Island is trying to do and that's what I really like about it. While I think the story is even better than Unite's story, I do have two problems. For one, Jimmy is downgraded this time around. He's not playable at all and doesn't even get transported to Volcano Island. Jimmy is the leader and he's the one who brought everyone together in the first place. Why would they just downgrade his role this time around? I don't get it. And my other problem is the villain. Now don't get me wrong, the Magu has an awesome design, and I really like his voice. Fools, you have seen you but you don't really get to see the Magu until the very end of the game, and it's not really clear on who the Magu is, and what his motivations are. But yeah, overall, the story is great. I love the interactions this time around, the voice acting is even better than last time, it's just an even better story than before which was already the best part of Unite. And you wanna know another reason this story is even better? The cutscenes. These look so much better than last time. In Unite, the cutscenes were in-game, the animations were incredibly stiff, and most of the cutscenes were extremely awkward. In Volcano Island, not only is it now pre-rendered, but the characters are much more expressive, and more importantly, they feel alive. The models and environments look great too. Everything doesn't look like a ghost town this time. It actually looks lively and colorful. Even the darker areas still look miles better than the ones in Unite. Soundtrack wise, it's pretty good. Not only does the soundtrack fit a lot better than the one in Unite, but there's some pretty good tunes in here.
So yeah, presentation, huge improvement over Unite. But has the gameplay improved at all? The gameplay is actually quite a bit different from last time. While it's still a beat-em-up game, it's much more platformer-centric, and it's down to only two players this time instead of four. You have six playable characters this time around. SpongeBob, Danny, and Timmy return from the last game, but you also get Patrick, Sandy, and Sam as playable characters this time. The other chosen ones like Squidward, Tucker, and as I mentioned before, Jimmy, aren't playable at all. One thing that I'm not a fan of though, is that each level has a predetermined characters you play as. In every level, you'll play as Spongebob and Danny at all times. Every other character is only playable in certain stages, so you'll have characters like Timmy where you'd only play as them once. I really don't like this. I think the game should allow you to play as any character in any stage. It ruins some of the replay value. Like, I don't get the reason as to why. They all play mostly the same, so I don't really see an issue here. At least every character is pretty fun to play though. And like Unite, they all feel different from each other. Controls in general are a lot smoother than Unite. Like Unite controlled decently well, but Volcano Island just feels a lot smoother. And the jumping especially feels much better and not as heavy as before. Lives are no longer a thing in this game, and the upgrade system is also gone. I'm not really sad either of these are not in this game, because honestly, the more I think about it, lives are just becoming more and more unneeded and while I thought the upgrade system was alright last time, I don't really miss it at all. The blue orbs act as your health, while the orange orbs are your energy. Depending on the character you have, sometimes it's a projectile, while other times it's something different. One thing I really like is the icon above. It changes depending on how much health the character has. Like if the icon is either angry or sad, you're low on health. But if the character icon is happy, then you have full health. Not counting boss-only stages, there are a total of 7 levels in this game. Each level, you basically platform through various parts of Volcano Island and beat up some enemies along the way. Obviously, since this takes place in a different location that's not in any Nicktoon world, we have original enemies made for the game. Now, if you recall last time, I said that the enemies in Unite just felt very out of place. Well, here in Volcano Island, they fit a lot better with the theme, you know, of Volcano Island. And I do genuinely like these designs. They look pretty cool. The game has collectibles in the form of these character scavenger items, which once you collect a character set of them, you can unlock a bonus stage for that character. These are pretty fun and frantic stages, and they have some really cool visuals to them. Also, for Tucker and Squidward scavenger items, you'll get a movie theater to watch the cutscenes in, and an art gallery where you could view all the concept art. You access all of this in the hub world of the game. Camp Castaway. I like this hub world a whole lot more than Jimmy's Lab from the first game. You have a lot more stuff to do here, and as you progress for the game, more and more stuff changes and grows, which is so very cool. There are also these smaller collectibles each character has, where if you collect enough of them, you'll unlock a costume for that character, which is pretty neat. And unlike last time where it was only available in that cross save feature, the costumes can be unlocked in the actual game, which is nice. The feel of the game is just so much faster than Unite. Everything moves at a much faster pace, and it's just overall much better structured than Unite was. I really like the platforming too. It just feels so good, and while the levels are considerably shorter than the ones in Unite, all the levels are just pretty fun. I also love seeing different parts of the Nicktoons worlds inside the levels, and they even call back to the first game with a few of them. Robot thingy! Holy sure him! Yeah, we sure did, Spongebob! So, what are the bosses like? Honestly, all of them I could describe in one word. Meh. None of them are outright bad, like the Crocker fight from the first game, but none of them are really that fun, like the Syndicate fight. The main problem with these fights are that they are way too easy and they're extremely short. Like with the sand monster, all you need to do is just keep shooting at his head to push him into the water, and that's it. And the other bosses don't fare much better. They aren't awful, but overall, they aren't better nor worse than last time. If there is one big highlight I must bring up about Volcano Island, it's the final level, the Summit Storm. The final level is amazing. The platforming is great, the level looks so beautiful, and that musical score is just amazing.
definitely my favorite part of the entire game. So, is Volcano Island an improvement over you? Yes. It, it literally is in almost every single way. The only thing that I would say Unite has over Volcano Island is that it has four player co-op. But that's pretty much it. Volcano Island just has a better story, improved presentation, much better gameplay, and just is an overall fun game, even if it's not with two players this time. It's not a perfect game. I don't like the predetermined characters in each level. I think the bosses are pretty weak, and I think the game is a bit on the short side, but I had a really fun time playing through it. If you're looking for a fun but very short platformer, I'd recommend picking this game up. It's not amazing, but I've really enjoyed it for what it was. In terms of which version, it doesn't really matter this time, but I usually go with the GameCube version, mostly because of its really comfy controller. Man, I love this thing. Well, that's all the time we have for today. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and thank you all so much for the positive reception from my last review. It means a lot. Well, I hope you all have an amazing day, and see you all next time for my review of Attack of the Toybots. Take care everyone!